Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy O'Dell with an ET flashback. It was, <laughs> uh, it was, um, it wasn't difficult to swim with it on because it was hydrodynamically designed. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know if they, they consciously made an effort to design it so that it was, uh, it was going to be easy to swim in, but they did consciously make an effort to design it so it looked like a fish. And because of their effort to do that, it was actually very, very easy to swim in. I swam faster than most of the frogmen when I, was, when I had uh, the, uh, the air to go far away from my air. I could swim faster than those guys. But uh, uh, the hard part about it was on land. I mean, I was literally like a, a fish on dry land, you know. I mean, I just couldn't do anything. I was helpless. And that's a bad feeling, you know, to just be lying there and everyone has to get, you know, a towel for you if that's what you want or they have to turn you over if you want to be, you know, you can't really flop over with a 35-pound tail on you that's all full of water. And, you know, that was hard, you know, being lifted in and out of water up on this crane. Daryl and I would be down underwater with our little masks on and with our breathing through our little regulators that were attached to, to air tanks that somebody else was holding. And when the time came for the cameras to roll, we'd get the signal, okay, we're rolling, go. And the masks would come off and you inhale and you let the regulator go and you swim by and you do the shot and you wait around till you're all done and they come and pop that air back into your mouth. And you're blind, you can't see anything because you don't have the masks on. But it was fun, and we were able to get to it like clockwork. Some of the hand signals were like, you know, there was hold, stay right where you are, don't go anywhere. There was, uh, we're going to do it again, you know, we have to do it again, are you okay? And then of course there's the, you know, that means give me my air, that's a kind of a universal hand signal that everybody can pretty much relate to. The closest moments we had were when you were thinking, am I actually going to make it to the other side of the camera frame in order to get that regulator into my mouth? You always found a way more than anything else. It's, it's hard to swim in shoes and, and a suit, though, and it certainly was hard for Daryl Hannon to swim in the, in the prosthetic device, but, you know, you, you just eventually learn that it's as dangerous as walking across the street if everybody's doing their job, so it was fun. If you needed air, you just made a signal, which was you banged against your chest and reached out your hand, and Tom also says that there's the universal signal for I want air, which is <laughs> just like choking underwater. I think that everybody is perfectly willing to blow any sort of semblance of reality away when they're talking about a mermaid. Mermaids, you know, are so deeply rooted in, as far as, you know, folklore is concerned that they're almost like, um, it's, it's not like Tinkerbell, you know, it's, it's just something that, okay, all right, we know it doesn't happen, we know it's not possible, but come on, let, let's have a little bit of fun here and just let reality slip for a little bit and, and get into the knowledge that mermaids exist and are as beautiful as Daryl Hannah is and that they can fall in love with mortals just like us. I think it's, it's, a, you know, it's a nice way to approach going to the movies, the same way as you know, seeing little extraterrestrial, you know, eat the little candies. You know that's not going to happen, but gosh, it's just so neat. Why don't we just suspend this for a little bit? I mean, it's only an hour and a half. It's only, you know, hour and 40 minutes. It's, there, there's plenty of time to deal with the hard edge of reality for the rest of our lives.